podcast you're about to listen to is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of horror movie fans who chose to listen to the huge horror movie podcast. With your host, King Hello, and welcome to the huge horror movie podcast. You join me live in the woods in Morristown, Tennessee. Shh, gotta keep quiet case one of the locals hears me. I'm just by the uh, remnants of the uh, uh, cabin from the first evil... Uh, no, I, I'm doing a, a podcasty thing. Yeah, it's all right. Don't, don't worry. Actually, no, I mean, I'm not in the woods. That was that was just a bit of fun. Just a bit of fun to start off the show. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'd like to read you something from the horror movie Massacre which is set in the woods that I just pretended I was in. So here we go. I took the chainsaw to his neck, keen to block... Oh, can we do another take on... Uh, I should say, though, that this show is recorded in one take, so it's practically live and anything goes. That's the way I'm going to do it. That's the way I did the second one. That's the way I did this one, but not the first one. No, the first one, I did it in three, because I didn't know what I was doing. And some would argue, I still don't. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I'll do the reading now, I'll do it now. I took the chainsaw to his neck, keen to blot out that horrible noise he was making, that gurgling, desperate wail of a creature acknowledging its imminent demise. I turned the chainsaw off. Or after almost decapitating the hostile demon that had chased me through the woods just moments ago. It hadn't put up much of a fight or a turn from the dead, like in the movies. It just lay there, oozing the red stuff, darkening its surroundings and quivering slightly, as if its resurrection was looming. And perhaps he would come back, out here in these woods, out here within the evil dead itself. It wouldn't have surprised me. <laughs> there we go. That's uh, from the horror movie Massacre by myself. <laughs> anyway, the movie in the background today is The Prey. I uh, don't know what year it's from. Let me just look at the box. It's from uh, 19... <laughs> Huge pause. 1980. 1980, this one. Good year. And this was one of those movies that just sort of Arrow video just... Uh, Plucked out of obscurity. Well, obscurity to me. I'd never even heard of it. Don't know if you had. But, uh, yeah, I love it. And it's uh, it's a great... Um, uh, <laughs> that's the box clicking. It's a great example of what Arrow Video... What, uh, what I like Arrow Video to do. And that's to find something that I've not seen before. Or even heard of before. And give it this lush treatment. The only thing... Let me just lean forward, lean forward again. Yeah, it came with a, I think, it's a, it, do they call this a limited edition uh, slipcase? I think it was this one. I, I can't, I think, yeah, it was. But, you know, I prefer the cover on the actual box than the slipcase, which is well annoying. Uh, you know, what am I supposed to do? I don't really want the slipcase now, but it's like, it's limited edition, you know. It'd be rude to, to, <laughs> to destroy it. Um, so... There we go. That's that's my life. That's that's the, that's the terrible things I have to deal with on a day to day basis. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're talking about in the woods horror movies today. So I mean, that's not actually a genre in of itself, is it? It's more of a setting, um, but it's it's just a great horror setting. I don't think there's any other genre where the uh, the woods really. Uh, are the you know a, a predominantly used setting? Are there? Uh, <laughs> and very high there. Uh, you know you get it in some comedies. You know like I uh, can't think of any. Can't think of any. But there are <laughs> there are some, aren't there? <laughs> There's definitely some comedies out there in the bushwhacked. Bushwhacked. That was in the woods. I liked that one. Daniel Stern. Uh, and I can't find that one on. Uh, that was one of those I used to watch many years, many moons ago. Uh, which uh, was always an entertaining, silly, very silly film. And uh, in the, in the great outdoors, it's got a bit, bit of woodland uh, waffling. Waffling again! Anyway, 
So yeah, we're going to talk about some uh, classic uh, in the woods movies today, and do some um, questions, obviously from the huge horror movie quiz book. Um, Evil Dead. I've got. I brought up this list here on Ranker dot com, uh, and number one is the Evil Dead, and and I probably put that at number one as well. And I'll tell you for why. Uh, cause probably because actually no no I didn't. <laughs> Going back to. Uh, my notes here, Evil Dead 2 is the one I, I wrote down because I saw, the, I saw the Evil Dead 2 first. Uh, as I recall, I was uh, lent two VHS horror movies whilst at school by Abigail, uh, who was the, the girl that sold me uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre pre-cert VHS. You know, we were both horror fans and the same music fans and... It's it's quite weird with Abby, uh, Abigail. Uh, <laughs> I said Abby then because she is kind of named in uh, the horror movie Massacre. That's where the character Abby's name comes from. Uh, but yeah, it was quite weird because we hadn't seen each other since school. And then I was taking my nephew to school a uh, couple, couple of years ago now, I think it was. And... Suddenly, my my dad started talking to uh, th this couple, and you know, I was looking at the the lady, and I was like, she looks just like that girl I went to school with, and sure enough, it was. We both couldn't believe it. Anyway, she went off to Canada, so oh, she's gone again now. Right, <laughs> I digress. I digress terribly there. I go way off. So yeah, she gave us these two uh, VHS. And one was Day of the Dead, and one was Evil Dead 2. Uh, both part twos. What's, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, and I still remember when we put Day of the Dead on. I'll never forget this. We were watching Day of the Dead downstairs and uh, with my brothers, and my dad walked in, and it was that scene where the, uh, the, the zombie on the operating table leans over and all his insides spill out all over the place. And I remember da my dad going, Hey, this is a video nasty. Yeah. How wrong he was. That wasn't on the video nasty list. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Day of the Dead was never prosecuted as a video nasty. It possibly was cut, but I can't remember. Because everything got cut, didn't it? If you were in the UK like me, you know, Evil Dead. Uh, uh, definitely the first one. I can't, I, don't, I can't remember if the second one got cut. Probably did, like I said. Reanimator was cut to pieces. Sure, it was like two minutes long what we had left. Uh, so, yeah, Evil Dead 2 would, would probably have been the first time I'd experienced a horror movie set in the woods. And that's, that's probably where my love of uh, in the woods horror movies began. What was yours? Hmm? Write it in the comments. I did that write it in the comments line again. But I don't want you to write anything in the comments. I don't read them. No, don't bloody wait. No, I do. I saw, I saw one. Oh, let's get it up. Let's let's bring it up. Even though I can kind of remember it <laughs> already. It says, "Stop making these bloody podcasts." Oh, it's nice, isn't it? No, that's not really there. It's uh, <laughs> let's have a look. Thirteen subscribers. I'm doing pretty bad, aren't I? Eh? Doing pretty bad. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll build. I'm trying to find my own channel. It's harder than you'd think. Uh, was it on... Um, yeah, it's on... Oh. Uh, and it was from John Judge Jeffries. Love these podcasts, he says there. And I've, I've clicked on like. Isn't that nice? Right. So we're moving on to some questions now, though, because it's got to that part in the show where we do some questions. In the woods are movies. In the cabin in the woods, which creature does Steve in brackets, Bradley Whitford, bet on, which ultimately ends up killing him in the control room. <laughs> Number two, which Prometheus star appears in the 2008 movie Eden Lake as Steve Taylor? So easy, that. Number three, where is the rebellious teenage Heather sent to in Lucky McKee's 2006 film The Woods, starring Bruce, Evil Dead, Campbell? Bruce, Evil Dead, Campbell, Bruce, Ash, Campbell. Just Bruce Campbell, it says. So, uh, which series of comedy films is Willow Creek director Bobcat Goldthwait most known for? 
And number five, what do the expedition members in Yellow Brick Road frequently keep hearing when they are out in the woods? Right, so there's our first five. And as the format dictates, we have a small chat, then we return to the answers. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, right, so Yellow Brick Road. Huh? That's a spooky little film. I don't know if you've seen it. Let's see how big it is. Oh, come on. It didn't bring it up when I Googled it. Uh, <laughs> there it is. You know, do you know what? Because I'd I done it as as it is. It's what it's, it's it's styled as one word. Yellow Brick Road. Yellow Brick Road. That's how they, that's how they wanted us to say it. Yellow Brick Road. Uh, <laughs> is that too loud? Did that hurt your ears? Yeah, Yellow Brick Road. Uh, how well? It's got 5,400... Numbers. 5,544 votes on Internet Movie Database, so that's that's fairly well known. You, uh, If you're looking at Internet Movie... I look at Internet Movie Database for... Um, sort of judge the popularity of something. Uh, particularly, like, in, in, the, in the many quiz books that I do, you know, because uh, sometimes I'll, I'll happen across... You know, I'll, I'll want to have an alternative answer as a zombie film or something like, you know, because I'm doing Return of the Living Dead at the moment. That's why I said zombie film. And um, so I'll I'll want... <laughs> I'll want to, to you know, I'll, I want to... Are <laughs> talking shiverish? Anyway, yeah, I, I, I need it sometimes to judge how popular something is. And, and those votes help. Your votes help, people. Thank you very much. My uh, loyal fan. Imagine if I was big-headed enough to assume that uh, I had a, a loyal fan base. Huh? Can you imagine that, my uh, my loyal Kilgorians? <laughs> that was that was a joke. That was pre-written. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Kilgorians, though, eh? Kilgorian sounds like a religion. Um, maybe I should. Uh, maybe I should do a religion. I'd, yeah. I'd, Oh, I've always wanted to start my own religion, actually. I don't know why. I just think it'd be fun. I think it'd be a hoot, don't you? Kilgorian. I'm Kil Yes, I'm Kilgorian. Uh, I'm going to a Kilgorian. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to a... Clin oh, bloody hell. I'm going... To oh, I'm not even doing that joke. Because I've forgotten the bloody word. Words. The word has eluded me. That was it. I'm going to a Kil I'm going to a Kilgorian ritual sacrifice tonight. I'm sorry, I'm busy. Uh, <laughs> that was it. It wasn't even worth it, was it? So yeah, that's the Kilgorian thing, uh, and it would need its own Bible, wouldn't it? So um, I could write that, I suppose, Kilgorian Bible, or or it could it could be the uh, horror movie manual. I've already done it. There is already a Bible. It's Bible esque, isn't it? It's full of things <laughs> like the Bible is. Uh, so there we go. Join my religion. Become a Kilgorian. Buy the horror movie manual, and uh, we'll we'll have a ceremony or something, congregation sermon and all that, and then we'll all commit <laughs> ritual suicide together. It's one of those bizarre. It was one of those bizarre cults in disguise. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I'm waffling. I'm bloody waffling. The silly things I say. I don't know why I bother. Right, so the answers to the uh, In the Woods. The first five answers are... So that one about the cabin in the woods. Of course, it's that lovely merman. He's a lovely thing, wasn't he? The merman. I did I did this, um, uh, this fan poster with the... What was it? Cap oh, the merman in the woods, I called it. And had the merman on the front there. These, there's so much room for spin-offs, isn't there, from The Cabin in the Woods. So many creatures seen in that film. Yet, it's I think it's remained just as that film totally, hasn't it? Is there anything else? Are there, are there fan films? Uh, comic books? You know, it's crying out for uh, comic books. Uh, Cabin in the Woods. I'm going to have a little look. Oh, you're now live. You know, save you typing it into Google. Uh, it's, oh, it's a lawsuit. Oh, I seem to remember this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody had written a book, hadn't he? Uh, I think I think it was a self-published book. Author Peter Gallagher, Gallagher 
filed I've just squashed the screen and lost that uh, I filed a copyright infringement lawsuit in California in can in I should be I should be in a California federal court against the makers of the film Gallagher claimed that due to the similarities between the film and his 2006 novel The Little White Trip and Night in the Pines Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard had used his work without permission the lawsuit demanded 10 million dollars in damages Whedon and Goddard were named as defendants along with the production company Mutant Enemy Productions and distributor Lionsgate. The case was dismissed five months later. Oh, it's a strange ending to that tale, isn't it? The Little White Trip, A Night in the Pines. I seem to remember reading something else about that. Uh... <laughs> I th I th and I think it was that I looked. I remember looking up that book, and it didn't. It didn't seem particularly familiar, uh, oh, similar to me. It's not got a synopsis of the book. That doesn't help, does it? Eh, Gallagher? Covers rubbish. No offense, but come on. <laughs> Just this, like this hand holding up a. Uh, is that a sunflower? I don't do flowers. I don't know what. I think it's a sunflower, and it's sort of like. It looks more like it's in the 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 snow. I mean, there's no snow in Cabin in the Woods for a kickoff. So you got that wrong, didn't you? Anyway, I think I mentioned that is uh, in the um, incredible horror movie facts. Uh, we'll do some other facts now from the Cabin in the Woods. Uh, you know, we'll go off on a tangent. Hey, why not? Uh, Fran, Fran Kranz, love that name, had a real scare while shooting on location in Vancouver. He decided to go for a little run to work of a sweat and ended up running into a black bear. But because he was making a movie, his initial reaction was that the bear was only a man in a suit. When he realised it was real, he promptly ran away screaming, Bear! Bear! It's appropriate. Here is the thing. I've got this thing in the book. I knew I, I knew I'd heard of it. Uh, the white little white trip and night in the pines. Gallag Gallagher's book features five friends: three male males <laughs> and two females. The same as the cabin in the woods. Oh my god! It's got the same amount of characters who take a trip to a remote cabin in the woods. Uh oh and are terrorised by the cabin's previous owner who has killed his entire family. Ah, now, see, that's totally different now. In the end, it is revealed that they're... Oh, hey, oh, hey, up. In the end, it is revealed that they are being filmed and manipulated by people behind the scenes. Oh, dear. Actually, I'm on your side now, Gallagher. Gallagher claims that even certain character names are incredibly similar to those in his book. For example... Julia and D Dura, Dura, never heard that name. People called Dura. Uh, Julia and Dura are called Jules and Dana in the film. <laughs> and the cabin, oh, the smoking gun. And the cabin is called Brinkley Cabin in the book and Buckner Cabin in the film. <gasps> you naughty people, you ripped him off, didn't you? And looks like you got away with it. Right, the film got so... That's terrible, though, isn't it, eh? What if that happened to me? <laughs> Are any of my stories good enough to be ripped off? Uh, the film caused some controversy amongst horror fans, but not in reference to the film itself, but a review of the film by New York Observer critic Rex Reed. In the article, he made numerous inaccurate observations, clearly as a, as a result of not actually watching the movie, or at least not really paying attention whilst viewing it. And here's a few examples comparing his review with the actual film. OK. They encounter a cretin with rotting teeth and one eye. So that's not in it, in it is it? The cretin, actor Tim Dazan, as the character Mordecai, doesn't have rotting teeth and he has two eyes. Pause that one, didn't you read? Creaking door to a cellar of corpses. Well, maybe the door creaks, but there's no corpses down there, you idiot. Vampires circle the moon and suck the hot stud's blood. OK, so if you've actually seen the film, you'll know that there are no vampires and the hot stud 
is killed when he rides his motorcycle into the camouflaged forest field surrounding the woods and cabin. Next one. The reefer-smoking doofus, so stoned he has to struggle to make complete sentences. <laughs> Sounds like me, doesn't it? And not the being stoned, but the struggle to make complete sentences bit. Yeah, I'm with you there. With you there, Fran Crowns. He doesn't, so, yeah, he doesn't actually struggle to make complete sentences. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. We'll use that one. Cut. Print. Check the gate. Yeah, he's actually very smart and articulate. Uh, next one. When they fail to notice... What? No, oh, bloody hell. I've done it again, Franz Kranz. Uh, Franz Kranz. Uh, <laughs> what they fail to notice is the hidden cameras. Really? Marty discovers the hidden cameras in the cabin. Bloody hell. And last one. It's all part of an elaborate video game that allows paying customers to watch real people slaughtered. No. Just no, Mr. Reed. Totally wrong. That isn't what it's all part of. I think Rex Reed needs to re-watch the movie strapped to a seat with, uh, with his eyelids forced open like Alex in A Clockwork Orange, says Killian Gore there at the end of the incredible horror movie facts. <coughs> Book. Terribly sorry. Uh, so, yeah, the, the question that, that was question one. Waffled on way too long, didn't I? Uh, and question two is, of course, Michael Fassbender, who's in Eden Lake. I've not re-watched Eden Lake. Not much of a fun film, is it? It's quite bleak. Harrowing. Very harrowing. <laughs> Number three. The uh, Where is the teenager have a scent in the, the film? The Woods. It's a private boarding school called Falburn Academy. I've not seen that one. Um, number four. Willow Creek. Yeah, Bobcat Goldthwait. Yes, he was, he was, of course, Zed in the Police Academy movies. I didn't write it. Uh, <laughs> that's a very bad impression. Um, yeah, but Willow Creek, a eh? Bigfoot movie set in the... Just going to have a sip of root beer. This is a uh, Bundaberg root beer, Australian. Uh, it's very good. That was a paid promotion, but no, it wasn't really. I wish I would. I wish I could get a paid promotion. Hey, eh, Bundaberg? Want to send me some money? Please? Number five, the old yellow brick road. Yeah, what do they keep hearing? It's music. I can hear music. Sweet, sweet music. Just stalling for time there whilst I... Didn't I have yellow brick road? I did bring up yellow brick road and then I stopped. Oh, yeah, because we looked at how popular it is. And we, yeah, we just uh, deduced it was fairly popular. But what do people think of it? Uh, its average rating was 5.2. Oh, in, in a negative review, G. Allen Johnson. Um, naming and shaming you, G. Allen Johnson, here of San Francisco Chronicle. Yellow Brick Road... Yellow Brick Road is without personality. It's com competently made, but the cast and direction are just blind. And I just remembered he's from uh, San Fran, isn't he? Fran Kranz! I just Fran Kranz. Uh, cast and direction are just bland, he says. They're bland, man. I didn't like the blandness. I like the, uh, the, 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 it was competently made. But the blandness. Horror review site Life After Undeath gave, oh, gave the film another largely negative review here, stating that the ending reeks of an overzealous attempt at providing a clever twist or something that may as, as well have been, as remained unexplained. Meet in the lobby, offered some more praise though, calling it a psychologically haunting film that leaves a rather disquieting feeling that is slow to fade even days after seeing the movie. Yeah, I found it a little bit uh, um, weird. That bit where she jumps off the cliff, then it's quite surprising and sort of weirdly done. There's something weird about it, something freaky about that whole film. It unsettles me, chills me to my core. Dennis Harvey of Variety called it a well-crafted horror mystery. So there you go. It's a well-crafted horror mystery. Let's take the positive one and we'll run with that. We're going to run with that. Uh, so what do we want? Eh? What do you want now? Questions or some trivia? Hmm? What do you want? Eh? What do you want from me? We're going to do some trivia. Because I want to talk about one of the other just the classy classics. <laughs> classy classics. 
The Blair Witch Project. My God, this film polarises people, though, doesn't it? Some people just say, it's silly. Um, but, yeah, I think Blair Witch Project is something that works better if you yourself have an imagination. Because there's... there's um, and... And... <laughs> And you're and you're smart enough to to be listening throughout the film. I think you need those two things, and you, you need to be paying attention throughout the movie. You need to be listening to what they're all saying, the stories that are being told, and it's those stories if if you let them get inside your head, you need those to get inside your head. If you know if you're not paying attention or something, you know, if you just sort of say, oh, this film's just, just shaky, it's just doing me head in, all the handheld cameras, uh, and, you know, these annoying people whining, I'm lost, I'm lost. You know, I could understand that you wouldn't get the film, you know, There's, and, you know, it's not like uh, slickly put together or something, you know, there's not little jump scares here and there, there's not some wonderful uh, special effects and monsters, there's a few teeth, isn't there, in a bit of blood. You know, I can understand how it wouldn't satisfy a certain crowd. Let's call them a crowd. Um, but yeah, if you are if you are listening and letting the film get in, get under your skin, you know, because I, I seem to remember. I don't know why, but I, I recall that some people didn't get. You know, why was he stood in the corner at the end? <laughs> you know, why was he stood there? I don't get it. But you know, you had to have listened, didn't you? Because I found that ending so bloody chilling. And I'll, I'll never forget when I saw it. That the audience at the end uh, just remained silent and, as the credits roll. There's no music, is there, on the credits? There's no music in the film, which is unusual. And that's another great thing, you know. You know how many people can make a, a scary movie with no music? As, to my recollection... There's only the birds and the Blair Witch, isn't there? Can you think of any more? And that's that's quite a feat. Fate. Feet. Fate. One of those words, isn't it? Let's let's use neither of them though. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's quite a quite an achievement. Uh, so I've got written down here in Incredible Horror. Some people still believe the film to be re a real documentary. And I've actually encountered people myself who swear it's all true. Because they did do that thing, didn't they, where they said it was all true. And uh, I believe them. Did you? I believed every word. But it was made out. That was part of their their initial promotion for the film, to make it out like it was a real thing. And it was very effective. Uh, hang on. <laughs> oh, I've skipped a page. It's very confusing, that. Even though the film only took eight days to film, it ended ended up taking around eight months to edit it together. Oh, eight months, eh? What was, was he watching TV the whole time? Joke. That's a joke, filmmakers. Eduardo. Daniel. Um, they've gone on to do their own thing, haven't they, separately? And I, I, I love their, their, their stuff. Uh, one of them... Is of course that alien movie, which I forget the name of. So I'll look it up. You know, oh, it's gone to Blair, which the re, re, not a remake. Is it the third film, Adam Wingard's Blair, which still don't know. I'm, I'm not quite sure what I think of that. I want to like it more, and I will watch it again, and and uh, I kind of enjoy it, you know. And this is of course Blair, which too. One of those black sheep type movies. But I, I enjoyed that from the get-go. I think people have come back to it a bit more now and are sort of enjoying it. But I remember at the time it was really badly slated. And I don't think the director himself liked what, they, what they'd what done, had he? Because they uh, they changed it. Those meddling uh, producers, the, the money men came in. you got to change this. You don't like it. It won't make any money for us. That's a wrong accent, isn't it? I'm sure there was uh, American. So, yeah, um, it's not Daniel Myrick, the one. He did Believers, Solstice, The Objective. It's the other guy, I think. Eduardo, Sanche Eduardo Sanchez, 
Yeah, altered. That was the alien one. That was great. That was in the woods. We should include that, but that was more of an alien one. I, should, I, should, oh, I didn't mention that last time, didn't I? No, I did alien horror mil movies. I'm, I'm always going to end up leaving stuff out. But Alters is a 2006 movie. It's not actually in a uh, fan footage style, but it's um, these four guys who who uh, who seek revenge on aliens that abducted them and murdered their friend many moons ago. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Really, uh, that I don't think anybody's released that one on Blu-ray. Talking of Blu-ray and talking of In the Woods films, I'd like to mention the film Ritual, uh, which is a Kraken, Kraken film. A, and a classic of... Uh, a classic example of In the Woods horror movies. <coughs> Sorry, I've been unwell. Um... Yeah, it's a British film um, based on the a book by Adam Neville of the same name. I've not read it. I I, I never read the books. <laughs> With Rafe Spall. Rafe Spall uh, was uh, did that War of the Worlds recently. I think I mentioned that War of the Worlds. It was shot in the in the the little village where my brother and sister in law got married. So that was re really weird seeing the church it's got the church in it as well and it all gets blown up yeah but the ritual yeah i wanted to mention it in terms of blu-ray there's no blu-ray you know i think it came out on dvd come on dvd's old stop stop using it you idiots they keep they keep releasing things on dvd and not blu-ray blu-ray's the new format it's high definition and yet the DVD standard definition prevails in the marketplace. Although I believe, like sales in general, are of everything physical media are going down. They don't want us to own stuff. <laughs> they want it all in the cloud so they can just like get rid of that cloud and take the cloud away from you. You've got nothing now, have you? So that's probably why it's best to buy stuff, isn't it? Hey, eh? can't come and rob you from your house. Also, with like streaming and and well, particularly streaming. You know, they can change things as they did, didn't they, recently with that, that suicide show. <laughs> what was that? Su seven, seven, seven deadly sins. Seven ways to win. What was that show called? Suicide show. The suicide show. <laughs> I'll just type in suicide show. And it's something to do with the word seven. I could type 13 reasons why. <laughs> seven, nothing to do with seven. Where did I get seven from? Yeah, Netflix deletes suicide. Oh, that's where I got suicide from. Netflix d deletes the uh, suicide show from 13 Reasons Why. Hey, see? You know, if you'd bought that on Blu-ray, they couldn't come in, into your house, snap that particular bit off your disc. <laughs> is, that, is that how they delete stuff? Uh, any road. We better get on some more questions because the time's getting away with us. I didn't want this to be a particularly long one today. Uh, but I wanted to talk about um, going back to the prey, actually. Not not the questions now. Changed my bloody mind again. He's always changing his bloody mind. The prey and uh, stuff like Just Before Dawn and Don't Go in the Woods Alone. Um, uh, I think did I mention this before about, yeah, it's a good, it's a good natural... And, and very epic backdrop for low budget filmmakers. I mean, all you have to do is find some woods, you know, and then a lot of them aren't, aren't owned by anybody, are they? They're just, uh, you can just walk into them. Uh, and you've got yourself, like, you've got this great set for free. And I think that's why it's, they've ended up in a lot of low budget horror films. You know, it's not like low budget filmmakers could, uh, you know, set a lot of movies in space or in, in a prison or in, you know, in cities where they need permits and things, you know, in the woods. They could just show up with their cameras and make this epic looking movie and not have to pay for the, for the set design. And, the, you know, the woods, oh, they look great. So that's what, uh, that's probably why, one of the reasons why they've ended up in horror. Also because the woods are spooky, aren't they? Let's look at my definition of the woods. Oh, I've dropped a, dropped a bloody book on the floor. That's like Stephen Mason, isn't it? That's what he does to my books at Rotter. He's always throwing them. He's on... He's You can catch Stephen's stuff on um, Lonely Tree Entertainment on YouTube. It's very good. Because I'm in it a little bit too. Uh, so the woods from the horror movie manual. The, 
a common horror film location where cell phones and maps tend to be of no use. <laughs> He's a funny one. Mast, killers, ghosts, witches, bears, aliens, monsters, and all manner of dreadful things are hiding out there in the woods. And hiding in a cabin won't help you either. Yeah, you do get all sorts of things. Creepy crawlies and monsters and Bigfoot exists from the Blair Witch filmmakers. That's a good one in the woods. And Backwoods, that bear film, which would probably fit again into uh, animal attack movies, which will be a, another chapter in this thing. Because um, like I said, the woods, they are more of a setting. Um, and, and, and I think, though, that that's pro pro probably... <laughs> stuttering i think that's probably why the evil dead's almost like the prime example of an in the woods film because the woods are also kind of a character uh, and you know they get involved so we just say they get involved and leave it at that so more questions from in the woods i've lost have i just got rid of the bookmark what an idiot i have i can see it there on the desk i'm taking the bookmark out <laughs> Oh, bear with me now. I think it's alphabetical, but did I start with in or woods? Oh, I'll tell you. I start with woods, right? Uh, oh, this is awful. Uh, right, okay. Uh, number number six. I put the bookmark back in. Which eighties horror movie? Set in the woods in Silverton, Oregon, ends with one of the surviving characters shoving her fist down her throat. That <laughs> shoving her fist down the throat <laughs> of one of the men trying to kill her. <laughs> That'd be a bizarre ending. <laughs> At the end of the film, it want her to shove her fist down her own throat, and they will roll the titles. Uh, which nineteen eighty film? was shot in the same area as Friday the 13th at the same time and even features an almost identical shot of a car driving along a road in Hardwick County, New Jersey. Number eight, which Ingman Bergman film inspired The Last House on the Left? Number nine, we just cut up our girlfriend with a chainsaw. Does that sound fine? Which horror movie is this line from? Easy peasy. Number 10. The directors of the first Blair Witch Project pitched an idea for a prequel set in the 1700s to be filmed in black and white. Is that true? Or is it indeed false? So there our next batch. Uh, I'm just skipping along to look at some of the other questions. Uh... <laughs> What's that one? In 2017, which 2017 horror movie starring Joe Edgerton has a virus wiped out most of humanity? Oh, I know. Yeah, that was that. Uh, it comes at night. It comes at night. That's a bit woodlandy too, isn't it? Oh, it comes at bloody night. I, I don't know what to say. It comes at night. I should watch it again, really. Let's see, do, do, do people like that one? It's got an 87% on Rotten Tomatoes, 78, Metacritic 6.2, Internet Movie Database. It's almost like one of those where you feel a little bit stupid that you don't, well, you didn't really like it. But uh, I'll have to watch it again. I don't know, maybe I was sleepy. <laughs> I will have to watch it because it looks good from what people are saying here. And it won the Gotham Independent Film Awards for the Breakthrough Actor. When did he break through? Did he, did he come through the, the cabin or something? Uh, <laughs> that was a daft joke, wasn't it? Don't do jokes like that. Bloody hell. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to watch it again. I don't know. It just didn't get me. It didn't get me. The prey got me straight away. That sounds, that's a funny phrase, isn't it? The prey got me straight away. The prey's good. Yeah, the prey's great, and it's it's a it's a wonderful example of um, a, 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 the <laughs> how to do a good disc <laughs> of a good Blu-ray because it's got yeah, it's got the extended version commentary. I would have liked uh, hysteria lives. Hysteria continues. I never remember which one they use. 
Hysteria continues commentary on that. That's the only. Th that's the one thing that made it not a perfect Blu-ray, because it, it had some other things. It went back to the locations. I like seeing the film locations, because there's a lot about like uh, horror film locations, um, uh, which is the basis around the horror movie massacre. You know, I'd like to go and see some a lot of horror film locations, but they're all so far away. I've been to some. I went to the Wicker Man Beach, uh, even though I didn't know it was the Wicker Man Beach. Really annoying, you know, because we went to, on holiday in Scotland and we was on this beach and St. Ninian's Cave it was. Yeah. So I remember taking a picture of St. Ninian's Cave and all that and then uh, got home and I rented uh, from Love Film. Those it was those days where I think in America you still get them, don't you? You can still get the disc through the post, but they stopped it over here. Uh, so, yeah, I'd rented uh, the Wicker Man director's cut, no, final cut, and I was watching it, and uh, there was the, I, th I just thought, that beach looks very familiar, and then I remember looking it off, and it's like, oh, bloody hell, I was on the beach from the Wicker Man, and I didn't even know. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I totally forgot what I'm talking about. I'm going to do the answers to those next five, and they are... Uh, the oh the horror film of the throat uh, the fist down the throat was of course uh, just before dawn, which yeah that's uh, one of my favourites that one. Again you know it just looks lush with those free locations of the mountains very much like the prey again. It might is it the same area? It could be I'm not going to look that up. You don't want to know that. You can look that you can look that one up yourself. So next off. Uh, the nineteen eighty oh yeah the 1980 horror film with the Friday the 13th same locations and all that jazz was of course uh, the Mother's Day the trauma film Mother's Day which I remember Mother's Day was one of those films that was like never available in the UK and I always wanted to watch it mainly because you know it, it seemed like um, it was uh, another Friday the 13th it was you know all in the same area and all that and being a like a massive Friday the Thirteenth fan, there was it's almost like Mother's Day was this, um, you know, like a new sequel. Even though it's not, it's not nothing to do with uh, <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth. Although it's uh, it's got a mother in it, hasn't it? Um, yeah, and I always wanted to see it. it. Didn't come out for bloody ages. I remember being close to ordering that one from uh, America. Uh, I can't remember, did it get banned? Upon its release, Mother's Day received criticism for its depiction of violence and rape and was banned. Oh, there we go. Banned in the UK. Uh, so, yeah, but it, it took it took as long as... When was it? Uh, it was rejected in 1980, banning it from distribution, but it was shown several times on the Horror Channel between 2005 and 2008. I didn't have the Horror Channel, but it was not passed for release on home media until 2015. My God, if I could do maths, I could tell you how long that... 80 to 90, 90 to 2000. 35 years. 35 years until it was passed on cot. Or, well, passed for home video release. Whew! <laughs> was it worth the wait? But Was it worth a 35-year wait? 35... <laughs> I don't know if I can possibly answer that one, but you have to. Um, no, it's not worth waiting 35 years for. I enjoyed it. I, I you know, enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it's, a, it's a really wacky, fun film. And yeah, it does have those Friday the 13th locations. Um, but no, I was talking about a 35-year wait. There's that new film Robert Rodriguez has done, isn't there? Where you've got to wait 100 years to watch it. I thought it was April Fool's joke when I, fa when I found this out. John Malkovich is in it. Uh, there's no details about the story, but it's related to that, that brandy that takes 100 years. I don't know the name. Um, there's a brandy out there that takes 100 years to make. Boy, that's a long time. Um, costs thousands. I wonder if it... I, I've never had it. Um, but, you know, I wonder, does it... Does it take? You know, if you were to do a blind taste test, would you sip that and think, oh, bloody hell. Hey, it tastes good. It tastes like I've been, uh, like, created over a hundred years. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's actually been sealed in, with, in a time-locked vault. 
and you can't watch it for 100 years. I hope it's worth the wait, though, for the people that get to watch it. They probably don't watch films then, you know, or it's a, big, a radically different format where films are injected <laughs> into your eyes. Uh, or something weird like that. Uh, so, the Last House on the Left film was... Uh, the Virgin Spring. I don't think I've seen The Virgin Spring. I've seen some Bergman. Not really my bag. Too arty. There's that one where he's playing chess, isn't there? On on the beach with death. And But but that whole scene and everything was so much better in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. So much better. <laughs> we just cut up our girlfriend. Yeah, that's of course Evil Dead 2. And the director's... Oh yeah, was the Blair Witch prequel black and white was that true or false it was true yes i think they still uh yak on about that don't they i'm sure i've seen it recently where they say they want to make this um prequel i don't know if they want to do it still in black and white it'd be like like the witch wouldn't it in fact the witch almost is that that prequel did they did they, they stole it hey they bloody stole it yeah so yeah the witch is you could look at that one as well i suppose as another Woodlandy hol hol holiday <laughs> film, horror film. Uh, oh, I've got a bit, a bit more trivia to do. That's the wrong book. <laughs> it's the one that fell on the floor. Right. I just have. So this the Evil Dead. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read it, even though I always make all these goofs reading. The cabin in Tennessee that was used for the majority of shooting on the Evil Dead has some very real and spooky stories associated with it. The filmmakers were told that it was haunted and that no one had stayed there for over 40 years. The Tennessee Film Commission informed them that the man who had built the cabin was placing the final brick on the chimney when a bolt of lightning struck him down dead. When Raimi and company arrived at the location, they noticed that there indeed was one brick missing from the top of the chimney. Perhaps even more disturbing was the story of a young girl and her mother and grandmother who moved into the cabin when they had nowhere else to live in the 1920s. During a stormy night, the little girl was awoken by the frightening weather and ran screaming into her mother's room only to find her dead. She then went to her grandmother's room and discovered that she too was dead. Bloody hell. Both deaths were natural causes. Cause, oh, I've done it. Take two. Causes. But the shock of finding both her relatives dead on the same night had caused the girl to go a little crazy. Well, it would, wouldn't it? Over the ensuing years. Whilst the filmmakers were shooting at the cabin, a pickup truck traversed along the mud road to the location and the occupants asked if they had seen Abigail. When they asked who Abigail was, they were informed that she was the girl whose mother and grandmother had died in the cabin back in the twenties. They said she was now in her sixties and whenever there was storm, whenever there were... The, that's not easy to say. Whenever there was a storm, she had a habit of wandering off into the woods and returning to the cabin to call out for her mother and grandmother. Furthermore, after filming was completed, the cabin mysteriously burned to the ground. That's an aside, isn't it? That hasn't, it's not related to, to the, or maybe it's related to the story. You could make a little film about that, couldn't you? I don't think uh, they could get you on copyright. It's true. It's a true story. Hey, shh. Hey, don't. Right, oh, that's my idea. Don't you, don't you steal that. I'm using that. <laughs> Abigail in the woods, the evil... Uh, how, what do we call it? The Evil Girl in the Woods. <laughs> the Evil Dead Girl in the Evil Dead Girl in the Woods. Hey, sold. Did I do the answers? Yes, I did. A uh, Wrong Turn Six. Oh, the Wrong Turn films. There's another. What haven't I talked about that I should have done? I've done all that. I've done all that. I've got. I've got some little notes here. Um. And I think I'd done them all. Did I do that joke, though? That the show will be done in one take, so anything goes. And then I say, OK, we'll cut there. Uh, yeah, 
It was not that funny. So, uh, Wrong Turn. Yeah, oh, the fact is from Wrong Turn 6, though. This is quite good, this. I like this. The producers of Wrong Turn 6 made the rather dubious decision to include the photograph of an actual missing person in the film without any approval whatsoever. The photograph had been provided to the press to help locate 66-year-old Stacia Purcell from County Wexford in Ireland, who was later found dead, having suffered from a heart attack and falling into a river. When Purcell's family were informed that her image had been used to depict a missing 81-year-old man, <laughs> oh, bloody hell, in the horror fl flick, <laughs> flick, they took legal action against the film's distributor, 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. As a result of the court case, all DVD and Blu-ray copies of the film were recalled from distribution. I remember that, yeah. And I, and I didn't buy one. Should have done. I bet, I bet they're on eBay, aren't they now? I remember seeing them shoot up in price because I read the story and then it was too late. They'd already shot up in price. Like, you know, people were selling them for like silly, silly, silly dollar. They sell them for silly dollar. Uh, but it, and then it, the film disappeared. I might remember for a little while. Then it came back and I do have the Blu-ray now and you can see that it's all blurred out on that notice board. You know, they had to change it. But what you know? Why would you do that to begin with? You know, why would you, why would you put an actual missing persons picture? Maybe, maybe thought they, maybe they were doing it for good. You know, I suppose you could think that. You know, because it's the publicity. Um, I think <laughs> I don't know the ins and out of the whole story. It was a silly decision either way to have done that. Um, and that's all I'm going to do today because I think I've talked about everything. I, I would have missed out loads, but, you know, I'm sure there'll be a sequel. So I'm going to head back to those woods in Tennessee and light a campfire and read a little more of the horror movie massacre to myself. Um, not really. Just going to press stop on the thing. So thank you for listening to the huge horror movie cod... cod... <laughs> Codcast. Yeah, it's a very fishy show. Oh, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. My huge horror. Best wishes to you all. And good night. <laughs>